It's time for Veterans Issues, the show that brings you information about veterans, military, and their families. Now here's your host, Ken Rollins. Welcome into Veterans Issues. Ken Rollins here. Today's guest is an old-time friend. Not an old-time, I sound old, but we've been friends a long time. And I'm glad to get him on the show today. And we've got something very important to talk to you about. You're going to need a pen. Stay, stay where you are. Come back and talk to Congressman Glenn Browder. Stay there. Welcome back into Veterans Issues. Today's guest is Congressman Glenn Browder. He's a professor out at JSU. And we're going to be talking about voting and a lot of other things. So uh, get everybody around the, the television and tune in. Welcome to the show. It's good to be back with you, Ken. I haven't seen you in a while. I don't know. We've, we've, yeah, we've, run in. we've had a, a lot to catch up on. Yeah, we pass at different events and stuff, and I see you from a distance, and I keep up with you in the paper, though. I know what you're doing. And uh, Glenn, we, you were a congressman for the 3rd District uh, after Congressman Bill Nichols. And how many terms you served? I served eight years, four eight terms, years. Okay. and then Bob Riley replaced me. Okay. You got enough of it in eight years? Well, not enough of it, but I decided to run for the U.S. Senate, and, yeah. and that uh, that took care of my political career. Okay, so you've not run for anything since no, then? No, no, I haven't. Okay. I'm enjoying the private life. I hear you. I hear you. We we talked out in the green room about a few things, and what we're um, let me let me go back and I want to set something up. I want people to know something about you that I hinted about the other night. You may not even remember this, but when our first meeting. Let me back up. I went to the VA hospital over in Birmingham, and they have categories for veterans' treatment. A combat veteran gets treated up here. A non-combat veteran gets treated here. A veteran down here. And down at the bottom of all of them during that time was an ex-prisoner of war. I didn't know that, but the chief of staff over there showed that to me. And I came back, and you had just become the congressman for the area. And there was... Uh, you got behind a bill, HB 190, as I remember it, and that reprioritized the ex-prisoners of war moved up to the top where they should be for treatment. Can you imagine being held in a Japanese prison camp on your knees for 53 days? This one gentleman that I'm talking about had been on his knees for 53 days, and he couldn't get treated. They had just people off of the street be treated before they would treat him. So you, uh, you sponsored that bill, co-sponsored the bill, whatever, and it became law. And they came to me and rewarded me for getting that done. You never got that accolade. Well, that little story illustrates a lot of that representation, Ken. Yeah. A, lo a lot of times you're a representative, whether it's uh, a member of Congress or a city council member, they don't know everything. Yeah. They don't have a grasp of all the issues. So we count on people like you to come to us and make us aware of the issues and convince us about whether it's a good bill or a yeah. bad bill, and that's that's a, an excellent illustration of that point. Well, you told me to, that people should tell their representative, whether it's city, county, state, federal, whatever, their issues if they want to get help on it. But I didn't know that back then. You told me later that that's what I did, but I did it just because I knew you was a congressman and I needed congressional help. For these people, and I wasn't ex-prisoner of war, but my gosh, if we're going to have people in German Hitler's camps and being beat and treated and mistreated like that and the Japanese camps, and then we can't give them at least equal to the others, but no, they were put below. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it was somebody just wasn't thinking when they did that, but but that action is your name is on that. and Yours should be on no, it too. No, they came in, they gave me an award. I never said nothing about no Glenn Browder. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you, you tell them you passed it. <laughs> no, they, they knew I had went to you. Uh -huh. that it was for my activism that they did yeah. that. And, uh, and that started me in the veteran stuff that I do, uh, advocates, because I found that uh, like voting and everything else, you can, you got, got a voice. Whether you use it or you don't use it, it's up to you. And I was able to say, I'm just as good as this person, but if I know of a problem, I need to tell somebody we need that, to fix it. That's essential. The public official is not a, you know, a man for all season, knows everything. Yeah. Whether it's a veterans issue, whether it's an agricultural issue, whether it's an educational issue, uh, 
we, we work hard to make ourselves aware of those, but a lot of them we learn of simply because a constituent contacts yeah. us and says, take a look at this. Well, there's a May the 8th, if I remember the time, May the 8th at 6.30 here at the Oxford Civic Center. There's going to be an event with, involving you and the League of Women Voters uh, that is going to talk about voting, voting rights, the new voter ID bill. What, what part are you taking in this? Okay, let, let me you know, back up. It's Thursday night, May the 8th at 6.30 at the Oxford Civic Center. And it's a, an information and advocacy uh, forum. It's a public service uh, forum telling folks about how to deal. When they go to the polls this time, they'll go under the, to the polls under the new law, the voter ID law. It's going to tell them how to deal, how to be prepared for the new voting system. And also, the part I will uh, take part in is once you vote and you get a politician elected, how do you as a citizen have input on issues? The same, the same thing yeah. you just talked about. Most people don't understand how that works. And by the way, this, this forum, is, it is a public service forum sponsored by the League of Women Voters and the National Association of, of Retired Federal Employees. And yeah. I, my part, somebody else from the League of Women Voters will talk about the voter ID uh, process. And I will talk about uh, how citizens can have impact or input to policies. Well, I didn't, I had uh, the, uh, Williams and Tom Smith here from the NARF, uh, the mm -hmm. people you're talking about. I was not aware, and I, I call myself savvy. I knew there was some legislation pending. I did not know they had passed that voter ID bill. And uh, I know there was questions about it. And uh, but I, don't, I don't think it will affect me. I always use my ID every time I go vote anyhow, but it's, there's a lot to that. Probably people are going to be surprised. Well, I, I don't think it will impact or change the way the process for most people. But for some people, it, it could change. They could be required to present ID that's different from, uh, from in the past. And uh, also at, at that forum, the uh, folks putting it on, the National Association of Retired Federal Employees and the League of Women Voters, will have forms there so you can fill out to make sure that you don't run into problems when you go to vote. So that, that'll be an extra benefit. Not only will you get information, but you'll also can uh, take care of the forms that you will need to take care of before you vote. So if we was talking about folks that need to, and I don't like people don't like me, folks don't like me using the word folks, but people that, that uh, should come to see this, uh, in my opinion, should be parents of teenagers uh, teenagers that's at 18 that's just going to vote for the first time. Uh, folks like me or like people like me that that don't know about the ID, the voter ID, that maybe got somebody that they know that may not have the proper credentials for voting. Gosh, wouldn't it be something to get up and get out in the rain and go down and find out you wasn't eligible to vote if you went through all that? Uh, yes, that would be a problem. And it's an, an excellent opportunity to bring first-time voters, yeah. young people bring first-time voters so that they can, uh, they'll feel a lot more comfortable about going yeah. to vote if they've uh, attended this forum. I can, we got less than a minute. I want to say this, that the, my daughter, when she turned 18, one of the greatest things she looked at as a privilege was not being able to drive or nothing like She got to vote when she went out there and said, I voted. A great privilege to do that. We need to instill that in the other. We got to go to a break. Come back, we're going to talk more with Glenn Browder. Stay where you are. Very good information. Welcome back to Veterans Issues. Talking with Glenn Browder, and we were talking about voting and responsibilities to vote. And uh, first time voters would be a great opportunity on the uh, May the 8th at 6 30 out at the Oxford City Center to bring someone out there like that. And and you was talking about your part. You were your Secretary of State one day. I was in the state legislature for one term, and then I was Secretary of State of Alabama yeah. for one term before I went to Congress. Yeah. So you you know the ropes of the. I guess that's one time you're teaching out there at, at uh, JSU. That's you've got the background for it. But the the voting thing has. Uh, I think I've, I've always took it for granted that when I got 18, I could vote, and I well when I vote, it gives me a voice. You know, a voice to say, I can gripe about what they're doing, but not that those that don't vote don't gripe too. I think they maybe gripe louder, but 
but you hit the nail on the head. If you come down there and you, you go vote, uh, now how do you how do you get something out of that vote? You got something just driving you education, uh, something else. What do you do? You go up to your representative and you do what? There are numerous ways that uh, you can impact policies. And the uh, thing to remember is that the, the easy things about uh, impacting policies or, or impacting decision making, the easiest things are probably the least effective. For example, if you go to a, a mall or something, they ask you to sign a petition and you sign a petition, uh, that's not, that's useful. But it's not very effective because a politician says, looks at that list and sees your name on it and says, well, he probably didn't even pay any attention to what he was uh, signing. Yeah. But personal contact, if you as a, uh, as a citizen, whether you voted or not, if you want to have some impact, I think the most important thing is to personally contact your representative. Introduce yourself and talk to them about the issue because if the representative just sees your name on a petition, he can dismiss you. He or she can just dismiss you. But if they, you come up to them at a mall, at a service station, at a town hall meeting, and you say, I'm really concerned about this issue. That representative is going to leave knowing, well, this person really cared. And uh, especially, you know, if it's something very, very dear to you, Give them your name on a piece of paper and say, I'd like to come talk to you. I know we can't talk here yeah. in the mall or yeah. at the service station, but I'd like to come talk to you. Well, in the case where you and I first met that time at about the ex-president of war, I called your office and made an appointment. And when we got there, you had an idea of what we was talking about, but you didn't know the, you didn't know all the particulars of it. You knew that there was an issue, but you didn't mm -hmm. know the particulars. And that's what I was able to bring I brought two ex-prisoners of war with me mm -hmm. who let you know their cases. And one of the guys, Mr. Denton, was uh, he was the guy that had 53 days on his knees in a bamboo cage. I can't think of 53 days of sitting in a recliner, much less on my knees. And I, but yet he was denied the same treatment of just a guy off of the street. And so I, I went through with the instead of a can you a card or a note, set up an appointment at your office, and that's where we first met, and it was action taken. Uh, I explained to Casey, like you said, you didn't know all the particulars, but you learned them, and when you did, you went forward with it. And I'd say that, that if you got somebody out here, a county commissioner or a city councilman or somebody else, that'd be the proper proper way to set up a time to go meet them. Or and, and politicians don't mind that. No. They count on having that input. If they're going to get, re-elected, they know that they have to pay attention to you. If you th or feel strongly enough about something that you want to pull them aside and talk to them and visit them. Uh, most politicians will appreciate uh, when you're doing that, but I think a lot of people are reluctant to do that because they think, he, oh, he's too busy, he's too important. Uh, but th they should realize that that's part of the process, sitting down with your representative and educating your representative that this is something that your constituents care about. Yeah, that's, uh, that's amazing. I can see that there's people out here um, that's watching this and they say, well, I vote all the time and I, okay, you vote and did you ever have a problem? And yeah, I had a problem. What'd you do about it? I grumbled and I griped <laughs> and I, I cussed the television, you know, but uh, I like what you're saying there because this is something that everybody needs to know that they can affect the actions out there if they'll go and do what I did and say, Congressman or uh, Commissioner, this is what's going on. Whether it has to do with spay and neuter dog animals or if it has to do with wild dogs in the area, there's somebody out there that you get to hear. Yeah. And, and uh, there will be a special part of the program Thursday night at the uh, Oxford Civic Center. Uh, I'm going to share what I consider my Ten Commandments of dealing with politicians. It's a Ten things I think are very important. I, I won't take up all that this time going over them. Ten things I think are very important for citizens to understand about how they can be effective. And I'll, I'll tell you the first one yeah. is be honest and straightforward. When you, you came to me, I want you to be honest. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the issue. Tell me about your interest in it. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, do you uh, are you a veteran? Or, or do you have a, 
a relative who's a, a, a veteran uh, P, uh, mm. POW. Mm. Uh, but don't come and hide the fact, for example, that you, you also sell things to uh, <laughs> prisoners of war uh, that, that, you're the gonna end, make yeah. a, that you're going to make a, a buck off. Be honest and be straightforward. Tell the representative specifically what you want to do. Don't just say, I need some help. Be straightforward and tell them what kind of help you need. Well, i tell you one of the things I found, especially at the state level, is when we're discussing, I've been out and testified at a lot of Senate committees. First, they want you to tell them the problem, mm -hmm. and then they actually want you to tell them how to fix it. Yep. <laughs> would, I, would you be right? Yeah. And, and then it's up to them to fix it. They don't, they're not supposed to find out how to fix it. You're supposed to tell them. That's, that's a part of the, the rest of the Ten Commandments of dealing with politicians. Part of it is follow up. Uh, for example, when you tell me you got a problem and you tell me what you want, don't go home and forget about it. Call me back two weeks and ask me if I've done anything about it. So, you have, uh, you're teaching out at JSU. Do you have a lot of people coming through? Do they, the people you teach, do they just want to, is it part of their curriculum? Are they the people that's actually wanting to be in politics? Well, what I, uh, what I taught, I, I don't teach now. Okay. I'm retired. Uh, but what I taught was uh, uh, American government, political science, American government, civics. It was not required. Uh, so students who took the course wanted to take the course. But most of them are not going into politics, people who take political science. Most of them are not going into politics. But they want to know something about it because everything that they do as citizens yeah. is governed by government. For well, example, yeah. we, we talked about it. When you get up in the morning and go in your bathroom and turn on that light and you know, use the commode and flush it, get a glass of water and drink it. Every, all that's regulated. All of that is regulated. <clears throat> but your and, vote. And whether they're going to be going to mm -hmm. politics or not, they need to know about how government impacts those things. We've got one minute. I want to make sure we get this in. I want to, I want to get Glenn Browder's take on us as a nation. Where are we in less than a minute? Well, I've always taught, and I've taught thousands of students up at Jacksonville State University, and I enjoyed it. I've always had mystical confidence in American democracy. I must say now I'm, uh, it's more mystical than confident <laughs> because we've got, some, we've got some big problems, and uh, they are, the problems are more serious. I don't mean to belittle yeah, I know. problems that people pay, face before you, you know, the Depression, mm -hmm. war, but these problems are, are very serious, and I think uh, we haven't found solutions yet. Yeah. Lynn, I appreciate you coming on here doing Thank this show. You, Ken. This is, it's good to see you. Again. I could, we could do two or three hours of this, the Glenn and Ken show, you know, yeah. or Ken and Glenn, whatever way you want to do it. But after but I, the first one, they may cancel our contract. Uh, <laughs> Thursday, May the 8th, out at uh, 6 30 p.m., Oxford Civic Center. Be there. That's right. Be right back. News that you can use. Stay right there. Welcome back. Uh, I want to tell you about a few things that's coming up. First of all, uh, May the 10th out at Silver Lake, the golf course at 8 a.m., the shotgun start for the 7th Annual Dwayne Williams Memorial Golf Classic. May the 10th out at uh, Silver Lake's golf course, 8 a.m. shotgun start. I didn't know you had to have a shotgun to play golf, but anyhow, that's uh, just kidding, folks. Now, anybody out there that has an automobile that's serviceable, running, that they'd like to donate and get a tax write-off for it, uh, give me a call at 256-831-2838. Uh, we'll give you the receipt. We got a couple of widows that need transportation to go visit their grandkids. And I'm serious, folks, it, we can give you the, it, it'll, it'll come up just like you donated to Goodwill or something like that. But if you've got a car that you're not using and you think about trading it in or selling it in, we can give you the, the amount for your taxes. Now remember, Memorial Day is May the 26th, Monday, May the 26th at 11 a.m. Centennial Memorial Park. I got some things planned for you this time. It's a little bit different than, than we've been doing. So put that on your calendar, May the 26th at 11 a.m. I want to thank everybody that's been purchasing that law enforcement tag. It's been a big help to us and helping us raise funds for the, for the law enforcement memorial up there. And that tag really looks good on anybody's car, and you don't have to be in law enforcement to get the tag. So ask for that. And there's the tag I'm talking about. That is the, that is the symbolic 
um, shield with the rose in it. That's the one that for the fallen law enforcement. And again, you do not have to uh, you do not have to be in law enforcement to have that tag. And it goes with all cars, I mean, all colors. So uh, think about that and think about the cause it goes to. I want to remind you about the veterans moments that we do here on TV 24 every week. The veterans moments that tell you about the bills that was passed in the legislature that you have no way of knowing about unless we tell you about them. And they, those, uh, those veterans moments are sponsored by Steve Hurst, Gail Brown, and Randy Wood. So if you see them, thank them for, for putting that on here. A lot of good information on there. The, the bills get passed, but you don't get, you're not knowledge of them. One of the things that was passed was 19-year-olds uh, can now purchase an automobile, sign a contract to purchase an automobile. You could serve in Afghanistan two tours, but you couldn't buy a car in Alabama. Now you can do that. That's uh, some of the stuff that we talk about. We also still need drivers, volunteer drivers for the DAV van. So if you're interested in that, it's the same number I gave you a while ago. Give me a call and I'll hook you up with Paul Brulee and those folks that, that uh, you can take the veterans over to the VA hospital, help them with their, getting their treatment. And that's, a, that's an awesome thing to do. Uh, so let me, uh, and that's just, you're just a driver. You have to be certified. And uh, we've got, we're gonna have the uh, flag burning and that's to destroying the old unserviceable American flags uh, on uh, uh, Flag Day, June the 14th, I believe it is. Then he has Flag Day up in Centennial Park. The young Marines will be disposing of the flags. So if you got any old unserviceable American flags, down on 15th Street, uh, East 15th Street there behind Rite Aid, the old Calhoun County 911 building has got a receptacle out front. You can put those in there and we pick them up and we will dispose of them properly and honorably. And that's, a, that's what you're supposed to do with, with those flags. And uh, let's see, HMR is still hiring as I understand it, down in Pell City. And uh, let me see if I can get all this in before they, before they tell me I'm out of time. I got to give a shout out to my buddy Betty Carr. I hadn't saw her in a while, but she's a, I call her the ambassador to Aniston, a lovely person, and uh, this for you, Betty. And so, hey, Bella, and hey, Caitlin. And this week's salute goes out to all the first responders. You went through some rough times last week, and we appreciate you. So this salutes you. We'll see you here next week on Veterans Issues.